All right, welcome back to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. I am jacked up for this episode. We're talking about my jam. We're talking about processes, process management. If I put some of you to sleep already, I'm sorry. We're going to make this fun. I promise a topic that's not traditionally talked about and that entertaining, we will make fun and we'll make sure that you understand the importance of it and where it fits in your business. So Harmonious, where is where is process management, right? Process management is the boring Fortune 500 term for operate. It's how we do what we do and how we keep everything flowing along seamlessly. That's the goal of proper process management. We want things to smooth, run smooth through our business so that our hair isn't on fire as the business owner. So we're going to dive in here. I have an amazing guest I want to bring on. First and foremost, Peter, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Brandon. Yeah, I'm super excited to be here. So tell me, first of all, how did you, I think you have an interesting backstory. How did you fall into processes and process management um basically i think well i trace it i studied engineering in school um i actually have a master's in engineering and i believe that's made me start looking at things as parts of a whole than as a whole for so for instance i know one of the things i um, studied was process optimization so basically um that's for mostly this um plants for plants and everything so you look at where the input is coming in you look at where it's going out and you look at everything in between you try to say okay this is not important this is important and all that so basically even in my life everything is <laughs> basically a process like it's funny some of my friends say i act like a robot at times because if you <laughs> if i wake up in the morning <laughs> if i wake up in the morning i have an actual um, timetable i block my time in 30 minutes block all Day. So at each time, I know what I'm going to be doing. Um, I have my to-do list and everything. So I think, um, yeah, so that's what makes me <laughs> think of everything as a process. I love it. And I'm I'm laughing with you, not at you, because I, <laughs> I, I see things the same way. And that's why and that's why I'm a fractional COO, right? Like at the yeah. end of the day, operations. So I always like my wife makes fun of me because I try to find like the most efficient way to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And she's like, just, can you just make it? Like, why do you have to make this a time study? <laughs> so we're going to, we, we are going to make processes more fun. Um, and I messed up in the beginning. I just want to put this out there. I said, the O we're talking about is operate. It's actually order. Operate is what you do. The value chain you fulfill on order is the process management, the SOPs behind it. So quick clarification there for you listening. I'm sorry, I make mistakes too. And there's two O's in Harmonious. Who did that? Um, so <laughs> Peter, let's let's dive back in. Um, so when uh, help me understand the importance of not for peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, but for businesses as as the founder, the owner, the CEO. How important is it to have a good handle on your processes um, so that you can actually grow your business and maybe for the a small business owner, so you can get out of the day to day of your business. All right. So one thing I've learned is that a lot of business owners are reactive. We always um, act after things happen. So I've seen a lot of times we have no processes, like we mentioned before. You have no SOPs. That's a standard of um, operating procedures. And most times we hear standard operating procedures, people think it's something that it's not. It's just step by step. It can be as simple as a YouTube video or a, this thing or in text just saying, start this continue with this and all that. So let's say um, on a typical day, you have a business, the usual things they do, they answer customer emails, they send out invoices, they create reports and all that. And you see that a lot of the times people just do these things as, as they come, you know, I'm doing this as they come in and doing this. And, and then when you see the entire team is entirely um, burnt out and everything. But when you say you want to, create a process out of this, that means you end up setting up systems in the business where you say, okay, invoices, instead of reacting to those invoices, the invoices are sent automatically to, to clients. So let's say a client requests for this and because of, because of a rule you said before, an invoice is automatically sent to them. You don't have to type out that invoice manually. You have reports, maybe your weekly reports or monthly reports or all that. Instead of wasting the whole Friday or whole Monday typing out that report, you can just say, okay, you've been, you do this, it's 
adds up somewhere, you do this adds up somewhere, and at the end of the week, it just compiles everything and goes out, saves a lot of time. You have um, emails, probably emails, we have emails, a lot of emails coming in all day. It's all going through emails one after the other trying to see which is spam and which is irrelevant and which is relevant you can also you can just put some keywords in your email so that as they come in they're automatically tagged so you know okay this is important i know gmail does that but you can do that on your own email too this is important this can be handled later this can be forwarded to this person just little things like that are things you can do to make your um, workflow more efficient and um, better yeah, I love that. I mean, at the end of the day, efficiency is the name of the game. If if we're both doing the same task and I can do three times as much as you, I'm I'm going to win. Like Definitely. hands down, that's, that's all there is to it. And it's the same in business. <laughs> if you can get more output for the same input, you you will just by nature win. Um, so I I love that you explained it like that. Now, when you're working with your clients and you're you're looking at implementing processes and automation, I heard you talk about automation right there with emails. Yeah. Um, what are some of the things you you take into account when you're observing the process as a whole and then determining what can be automated, eliminated, streamlined, all the different things that goes into it? What is what's your process to, you know, go through that process with with your clients? OK, so basically, when you're trying to think of what should be automated or eliminated and all that, you can ask different questions. You can look at the entire workflow. You can look at what things are done over and over and over again. Those can be automated. You can look at those things the that take so much time to do. Those can be optimized. Okay, this yeah, and this this preparing this report takes so much time. Okay, why does it take so much time? That can be um, optimized. You can look at the things that. Um, the customers complain about repeatedly. Okay, so what? Why? Why? Why did they complain about this today? Why are they complaining about it again? You can look at that and say, okay, there's something wrong with how we are carrying out that task. Let's look at it and let's look at what we can add or we can remove to get rid of those complaints and give it give better service to the customers. So basically that's yeah. Now I want to touch on that too, because that's that's so important when in the conversation of automation where I believe a lot of people get it wrong. It's something we always talk about here at What If. I want to hear your your take on it. Um, yeah. you're, you're already headed in the same direction that we usually go. But a lot of people look at automation as like the quick fix or and I'm not talking AI. I just mean like automating processes. Yeah. It's like a quick fix or, or how to get more efficient and make more money. But a lot of times people forget about the end user and they automate tasks that actually end up hurting the customer or making the customer do more work. I'll give you an example. Um, my my accountant, and you maybe you've heard my business partner, Sean, say the same story. Different accountant, same story. They've automated their, their client process to fill out tax returns. It mm -hmm. takes me like three hours to go through this process and fill out my tax return just to have them do it versus like two years ago before they were acquired. It took me like 20 minutes to send an email to that put everything together. It blows yeah. my mind. How do you go about making sure you're actually automating the right things and not hurting the end user experience? I think when, when we were mentioning that, it, it reminded me of my experience these days with um, a lot of these um, AI chatbots, which people use for customer service. You, you have a problem, you go on and they just take you in circles and they don't solve your problem. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and it does solve your problems. So I think one thing we need to remember is when, when we are talking about these automations and cool, a lot of times we are talking about saving time and saving money for the businesses. But like you said, the customers are the people who keep the business alive. They're the ones who bring in the money, and a lot of times we forget about them. <laughs> like you said, with the tax returns from twenty minutes to three hours, that's that's something else. Like I'm sure you're thinking of leaving that um, accountant right now. So. If anyone has an accountant <laughs> recommendation, please put it in the comments. <laughs> yes, I think basically when we're looking at the business, we should also look at it. We should look more at the customers, look more at the clients. Okay, how does this make the customer's life better? How does this make them make it le create less friction while when they work with us? How does this make, um, yeah, just basically make it, make it more Make it easier for the for the client to work with you. I think that should yeah. be, that should be paramount over 
how what it serves the business and all that. I, I love this. I, I can already tell we're on the same page, which and the reason I asked it is because a lot of people don't say that. They say just no, the business needs to be more efficient and profitable. But like you said, if if you don't have customers, if you don't have happy customers, you don't have you income. Have business. You don't have income, you don't have profits <laughs> at all. So yeah, I mean, let's put the pieces together. And uh, you know, that's what that's what harmonious is about. We understand that the these 10 disciplines exist in business. What we teach and preach is how they're linked and how to leverage those links. So one of those links, like you said, is between order, which is processes, what we're talking about and analyze, which is where we put customer service, because that is a metric that you need to be tracking and on top of, especially if you care about your customers, which I hope you do as a business owner, but that's a topic <laughs> for a different day. So let me ask you, Peter, in terms of analyzing metrics and relating that back to what you're doing with process automation and process management, what are some of the things that you take into account? Um, and maybe you can give us a story of exactly how you've done this with a past client, but what are some of the numbers and metrics you're looking at when you implement processes and automation? All right, so when you're um, implementing processes and automation on the business, there are different things. Like um, backstage, we're talking about a textile manufacturer I worked with before. What they do is they uh, manufacture the, um, the textiles and they import, they bring them in and then we're using paper for everything. And one thing they had issues was with was that the time between when the goods come in and when the goods go out. That's number one. Then second thing that was that the um the, the owner used to leave them away from where the business was. So whenever he had to get um reports, he couldn't get real time reports. He would have this um, probably a week or two weeks before, okay, he wants to know what's happening here, what's how much um, inventory they have. He would have to wait for a while before he gets that report. So when you, so, so, so now things like that are things that um, we had to look at in that case from the aspect of the business. Then for... For the... Um, we, we, we talk about the uh, model call it... For the customers, let's say you can talk about a typical restaurant. A typical restaurant, you have issues where someone comes in, they place an order, and they have this amount of time before between when the order is placed and when the food is ready. There are a lot of things that happen in that gap that can cause that delay. So sometimes maybe some uh, ingredients are not pre-prepared. Um, the communication, and, and I know some of them, some restaurants have the waiters and the runners, so the waiters take the order, the runners go in between the kitchen and the um, and the tables. Then you have, um, what do they call it? Yeah, you have different things that can be done to make all those things faster, make it easier for the both business owners, like I mentioned before, and the end users, the customers. Yeah, absolutely. I, I love those things that you compared it to. Um, and I think that's, that's why, you know, we get a lot of, a lot of flack sometimes that we put customer service in metrics. But if you think about what Peter just said, let's take the restaurant example. So between when a person comes in the door and then gets seated to the time where they get their entree, if this is a normal, like sit down restaurant, yeah. it's probably like 25 to 45 minutes, somewhere in there. Well, the metric that you could use as a leading indicator versus a lagging indicator is how many times does the the wait staff like like Peter said go to the table? How many touches are there to boost yeah. the customer experience so that you can ensure on the back end the customers are happy? So customer service that is a lagging indicator. You can't change how they feel after it's over, but you can proactively go to the table, give them bread, refill their waters, offer them wine, whatever it may be. Exactly. And that's why it's metric and that's how these things that's a process though. And that's exactly that's what we're talking about here. That's how all these things tie together. So I, I love this conversation. You could tell I could nerd out about this for three <laughs> days. Um, but I want to if, if people do want to go deeper on on processes, process automation, um, I love that you have a, a space for this. Tell me a little bit about your podcast and I'll, I'll put the website on the screen and in the show notes if you're watching and listening. But um, tell me about what you're talking about over there. All right. So um, 
the, the work we do for clients is through my business, like I mentioned earlier, that's Target ICT. But the thing is that um, at the end of the day, we can't save everybody. <laughs> we can't save everybody directly. So that's why last year, I think around this time last year, we started the podcast, the Tech Your Business podcast. So what the podcast does is it takes these, um, these concepts, process, business systems and processes like you talked about today. It takes things like blockchain that sounds like rocket science. It takes different things and tries to break them down. So even a CCO can um, understand because one, one value we have with um, target ICTs, we try to avoid jargon as much as possible. Like I said in one of the episodes of the podcast, when you're able to explain anything to a child, that means you understand it to the depths, you understand it fully. So yeah, so there's no need for jargon when you fully understand things. So that's what we do on the Tech Your Business podcast. We help business owners do more with technology by letting them learn more, letting them understand more about technology in a non-friction, in a less um, friction, in a, in a friction-free environment. Yeah, that's the thing. So I, I have put, um, episodes, I have guests who come on, different business owners, different tech experts. They come in, share their story, share their experience, share their key takeaways and all that. And yeah, I think we have about 46 episodes that are about now. It's That's awesome. Good. That's so cool. <laughs> As you can tell, I love podcasts. So um, congratulations on uh, coming up on the one year mark. That's amazing. Um, give me, though, uh, your your favorite not solo episode your favorite guest so far what was what was the topic you talked about I, I know this is a surprise question but off the top of your head like what was either the most popular episode uh or your personal favorite that you've talked about over the last year um my personal favorite was you know i don't need to think about that one at all it was just a few i can't remember the number but it was where we talked about um adhd i talked with mm -hmm. um, the founder of focus bear was from australia so we talked about how um business owners can use tech to focus because he was diagnosed with ADHD. I've not gone for a diagnosis, but <laughs> we all have ADHD. I don't think I need to. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think it's I like <laughs> I don't think like like for instance, I think I was on a podcast um, yesterday. I was answering a question and I, I do that a lot. My I just lost my train of thought. I was okay. I, I, I know. Okay, so what was the question? <laughs> 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 yeah now we all do yeah. that <laughs> yeah so so basically i, I think i love that um this because were, i could relate when i talked about my timetable he showed me his two paper timetable because when you use the phone it's full of distractions you might want to check a timetable and you, you end up in instagram <laughs> so at least the paper doesn't do that to you <laughs> that's so yeah, awesome that's i I love that. I'm going to go check that out and I'll figure out what episode it is. I'll link to wherever you're listening or watching this. I'll link it down below so you can go check out Peter's podcast. Uh, the website's on the screen, techyourbusinesspodcast.com. Uh, Peter, this has been awesome. Other than the podcast, uh, where can people find you? Can we follow you on social media or anything? Oh, yeah. you can. I think I'm most active on um, LinkedIn. So uh, my LinkedIn is just my name, um, linkedin.com slash in slash Peter Banigo. So that's where I'm most active. I barely post anywhere else. Awesome. Yeah, we'll be sure to follow you and, and tag you when this goes uh, when this goes live and we restream it here. But Peter, thank you so much for coming and, and jamming with me a little bit about processes and the order of your business, if you will. Um, we, we love that this is a conversation we get to have as part of what we do every day and what Peter gets to do every day. It's so important. If you leverage this part of your business, you can free yourself as the owner and the founder. You can get out. You can do those bigger, higher level things. This is this is the freedom. But as a matter of fact, we had a, a podcast episode on this with me and Sean a few weeks ago. The, the ticket to freedom is proper process management. And that's for yeah. you and everybody in your company. So go listen to Peter's podcast. Go check it out. See how you can leverage tech to get out of your business. Peter, thank you again for coming. This has been so fantastic. I hope to talk to you again soon. <laughs> Definitely. Thanks for having me on the podcast. All right. And for you listening, watching, wherever you're listening, subscribe, like, follow, all of those beautiful things. Comment down below. We want to hear your thoughts, what you think. How are you using processes and managing and optimizing your process management in your business to get out of the day-to-day? -day, or do you need some help? If you do, we can connect you to Peter. We can help you. We just want to get you free 
from doing the stuff that is repetitive and over and over and over and sucking your soul out of your business. Don't do that. So thank you for listening. We'll see you on the next episode of Harmonious at Lunch. This was a fun one.